Hello guys, welcome to this very short tutorial on the bonds of the forearm. In focus, we'll be looking at the counter, which is the more medial bond, and the radius is actually going to be the more lateral bond. Looking at the counter, it's going to be wider, proximally, and uh, actually thinner as you go distally. And the proximal ends of the counter will be having an olecranon process, then you have a trochlear notch, then you have the coronoid process. Then if you trace lateral in the coronoid process, you'd expect to see this fossa here, which is going to be the radial fossa. By a radial node which receives the head of the radius and the articulation that actually forms your superior radial on the joint. Then uh, inferior to the coronoid uh, process you'd expect to see um, the supinator crest which provides part of the origin of your supinator muscle. This coronoid process will provide for insertion for the brachialis muscle which is a muscle in the anterior compartment of the arm whilst it will also provide origin for the pronator teres muscle which is one of the muscles that you find in the anterior compartment of the forearm whilst the olecranon process will actually provide insertion for the triceps muscle whilst also providing origin for the flexor capi ulnaris muscle which is one of the muscles of the anterior compartment of your, of your forearm then if you look at the borders of the the borders of the ulna the more sharper border which happens to be this one it's actually going to be the interracial border meaning to say it's the lateral border that's where you have attachment for the interracial membrane then uh, this is going to be the medial border and if you trace posteriorly you'd expect to see a rounded margin which is actually going to be sub itinus lorries or length meaning to say you can actually palpate the posterior border of the ulna then tracing it inferiorly you'd expect to see the ulna head whilst you also have around the medial surface which is the surface here you have a very short style process is going to be the stellar process of the ulna, which in comparison to the stellar process of the radius is going to be shorter because that of the radius actually extends about 0.75 centimeters beyond the extensions of the stellar process of the ulna. Then if you look at um, the radius itself, it's going to be wider below, but then proximal is actually going to be uh, tapering. And this is going to be the radial head, and the radial head will actually be having a concave superior surface and in life it's actually covered by an annular ligament which essentially does not attach onto the radial head but only encircles the head of the radius and goes to insert onto the ulna. Then this is going to be the neck of the radius and just below the neck you'd expect to see a tuberosity which is this one, a radial tuberosity or the bicipital tuberosity which will also form uh, the insertion of the biceps bracket together with the bicepital aponeurosis which inserts into the skin. Then uh, the sharper border, which happens to be this one, that is going to be the interracial border, is actually going to be medial. And if you look at the distal end, the radius will actually articulate with the scaphoid and the lunate um, as part of the wrist joint. Remember, the ulna will actually be excluded from the wrist joint by the articular disc that you find existing at the distal radial ulna joint. Then, clinically, you'd expect to have fractures of both bones. There's what is known as Montagia's fracture and there's what is known as Galeazzi's fracture. Montagia's fracture is a fracture of the ulna, but you have subsequent uh, dislocation of the radius at the radial ulna joints. Whilst um, Galeazzi's fracture is a fracture of the radius and you're going to have subsequent dislocation of your ulna at the distal radial ulna joint. Then looking at the radius uh, alone, you can have fractures of the distal end of the radius with displacement either being anteriorly or posteriorly anteriorly meaning in front, posteriorly meaning behind and dislocations anteriorly will result in what is known as a smith fracture whilst dislocation posteriorly will be uh, referred to as your collet's fracture so to remember that you can say CP 